Look around you. What do you see? Hold your wrist. What do you feel? Touch the desk in front of you. What does it feel like? All of these observations involve matter. Everything we see and touch is made of matter. And even things we can't see, such as air, are made of matter. So, what exactly is matter? How is matter described? And how can matter be measured? During the next few minutes, we're going to answer these questions and others as we describe matter and its properties. This bird flying through the air, this boat sailing on the ocean, and this ski jumper gliding through the winter air all consist of matter. You decide. Is the gas filling this balloon considered matter? Yes, gas also consists of matter. Matter is anything that has mass and volume. We'll talk more about mass and volume later. You experience matter through your senses of smell, taste, sight, and touch. Things such as plants, animals, and buildings are examples of matter that are easily recognized. But gases that are common in air, such as oxygen and water vapor, are not as easily recognized. Different types of matter have different characteristics referred to as properties. One way to describe matter is based on physical properties. A physical property can be observed or measured without changing the makeup of the matter. You observe physical properties all the time. You touch objects to see if they're hot and you react to different colors. Shape, color, texture, and size are just a few examples of physical properties of matter. When this hot air balloon is deflated, it doesn't take up much space. But when it's fully inflated, it takes up a lot of space. Volume is the amount of space that something takes up. Objects of different sizes have different volumes. Solids, liquids, and gases all have volume. You've probably measured volume if you've ever cooked or if you've ever filled a car with gasoline. In order to accurately measure volume, it's necessary to use a measuring system. The metric system is the system of measurement used in most countries and by scientists. Liters and milliliters are units used to express the volume of liquids in the metric system. This bottle contains one liter of water. A swimming pool contains thousands of liters of water. This is one milliliter of water. There are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Things like cough syrup are measured in milliliters. One milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter, another unit of volume. A cubic centimeter has a length of one centimeter, a height of one centimeter, and a width of one centimeter. Cubic centimeters are often used to measure the volume of solids. Another property of matter is mass. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. You compare. What has more mass, this small child or this teenager? Oh, 
the teenager has more mass. As you grow, your mass increases. All objects, solids, liquids, and even gases have mass. In the metric system, the mass of solid objects is measured in units of grams, milligrams, and kilograms. The mass of an object doesn't change when you move it from one place to another. For example, this soccer ball has the same mass whether it's resting on the ground or traveling through the air. In fact, it even has the same mass on the moon because it contains the same amount of matter. The pull of gravity on an object determines the weight of that object, not the mass. You decide. Does the soccer ball weigh the same on the moon as it does on the earth? No, the soccer ball weighs much less on the moon because the moon has significantly less gravity than earth. So while the mass of an object remains the same, its weight varies depending on its location. The metric unit of weight is the Newton. The Newton is a unit of force. Weight is the amount of force Earth's gravity exerts on an object. An object that has a mass of one kilogram is pulled to Earth with a force of 9.8 Newtons. So, we can say that a one kilogram mass on Earth weighs 9.8 Newtons. While scientists sometimes use Newtons to describe weight, we typically don't. Instead, we describe the weight of objects in metric units of mass, grams, milligrams, or kilograms, or in English units of ounces or pounds. This golf ball and ping pong ball are about the same size. You compare. What would hurt more, to be hit with a ping pong ball or a golf ball? A golf ball would hurt a lot more than a ping pong ball because a golf ball has a much greater density. What is density? Density is the amount of matter in a given amount of volume. We can calculate density using the formula density equals mass divided by volume. To find the density of an object, you measure the mass of the object and the volume it takes up. For example, this box has a volume of 1,575 cubic centimeters. The same box, when filled with stones, has a mass of 3,000 grams. When we divide the mass of 3,000 grams by the volume of 1,575 cubic centimeters, we get a density of 1.9 grams per cubic centimeter. So far, we've discussed some physical properties of matter. Another group of properties, called chemical properties, describe matter based on its ability to change into a new substance with different properties. For example, when wood is burned, it changes into heat energy, smoke, and ashes. Flammability, the ability of something to burn, is an example of a chemical property. The ability of materials to react with other materials to form new materials is another chemical property. For example, iron has the ability to rust when it reacts with oxygen in the air. These are just a couple of examples 
of the many kinds of chemical properties. During the past few minutes, we've explored some of the fascinating ways to describe matter. We began by discussing that matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Some of the physical properties of matter were highlighted. More specifically, we discussed how mass and matter are measured. The definition of density was described and the process of calculating density was explained. Last, we briefly explored some of the chemical properties of matter. So, the next time you measure a liquid, weigh something, or describe a chemical property of something, think about some of the things we've discussed during the past few minutes. You might just think about the process of describing matter a little differently. Fill in the correct word to complete the sentence. Good luck, and let's get started. Number one, A is a characteristic of matter. Number two, is the amount of space something takes up. Number three, the of an object does not change when it is moved from place to place. Number four, is the mass of matter in a given amount of volume? And number five, properties describe matter based on its ability to change into a new and different substance. 